In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gentle Jesus, now I pray, listen please to what I say. Make me good and kind to all, just like you when you were small. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, the disadvantage as I think my child would have if this does come into place will be profound, especially for children that have any difficulties, learning difficulties, emotional difficulties, behavioural difficulties. It's going to be a lot of disadvantage, you know, if, if they change everything, you're going to be getting classes, getting mixed up. It's just going to have a knock-on effect on every child in the school if this goes ahead. It'd be just horrible. I mean, how are kids supposed to learn anything, especially if there is a child like my child in that class that sometimes has to be you know taken aside and spoken to or you know how are you supposed to learn a class of so many if there is a difficult child in that class someone or along the line is going to go astray some children will be overshadowed like say if there is a good like for instance i'm going to take a different look on it there'll be a good kid in the class and they're getting all their work down novel the teacher is spending all their time with the kids that are being, you know, bold or whatever. Like. Just want them to give them the best opportunity, give them the tools that they have in the school at the moment, give them an opportunity to make a good life for themselves, get a good education, and every child deserves that. Tell me about the programmes that are available to the kids and when were they introduced to the school? So we have, at the moment in the school, we have a very vibrant literacy project going, um, which means that our students are now reaching the national averages. And that has been a huge transformation. We also have reading recovery, where the children have a one-to-one -one program available to them if they're struggling readers. We also have a maths recovery program if, for the children struggling with maths. And uh, since that time as well, we saw the introduction of the homeschool liaison post, which we were the pilot school for that, one of the pilot schools, which meant that we got an extra post. One of the staff members here was freed from the classroom to go and establish good links with the community agencies and also with the parent body. And in that role, the teacher assigned to that role could, was free to home visit, was free to get the parents involved in their children's education and in their own education. So that was a key support. We also had a resource teacher for travellers to help support the children from the travelling community in a pastoral way and also in a practical way to help them with their educational needs. Why is it so important that the government don't make these cuts to the schools in disadvantaged areas? We are living in a time of great economic stress and pressure and cuts need to be made all across the board. But we cannot understand why the first round of cuts have actually targeted the most vulnerable and the, the least uh, vocal members of our society. Um, and I think they may be in for a major shock when they realise that the parents are actually mobilising. Maybe the uh, most important thing that has ever happened to them because parents um, who may not traditionally have been aware of their power as a group, who may traditionally not have voted even, are mobilising now and we can feel it in the community. Um, parents are very angry because this um, directive has hit them where it hurts. And um, we had one parent say recently, um, why is it that uh, the children have done nothing wrong? The children are the most vulnerable, with or without, or whether they're in a disadvantaged area or not. Uh, there is no reason why any child from this area would not go all the way and become the next Taoiseach, or become uh, a member of government, or become a solicitor, a doctor, teachers in the school, which we've had already. But these cuts would actually affect those dreams that um, the school is very much generating and the parents are very much behind. Well, a third of our teaching staff are going to be redeployed into other schools, which will be a real change for them that have to adapt to different areas. They've been specifically trained to work in Desh Band 1 schools and they've received a lot of training over the years. But in our case, we lose a third of our teaching staff. But it's not really about the teachers. So our main concern is the children. The children are going to be taken from classes of 15 to 1. They're going to be split across other classes. We're going to have mixed classes. So we'll have first and second classes in together. And it means the group that they're used to and the number that they're used to. So that'll be very unsettling. And it means that the teaching style, we'll have to change our teaching styles again. 
So our main concern is to change the children. The teachers will cope, they'll be redeployed, but the children are the ones that will um, be encountering the new challenges more. The effect of teaching a group of 15 to one, um, to one teacher uh, is affects a powerful change in the learning and we have known, those of us who taught a long time in the school, have known a situation of 35 to 40 children per room in the early days of the school. So we've actually experienced what it is like to teach very large numbers in a school with socioeconomic problems and with a lot of emotional issues children arriving in with many different issues. It's not about the educational curriculum only, it's a hugely complex hidden curriculum that's attached to working in a, a school like this. Um, we have children arriving with um, very many issues that they carry in with them from home, from living in a place that is stressed. And um, when in a situation of 15 to 1, uh, a teacher can tune in individually to 15 children and work very effectively on a one-to-one -one basis and in small groups and, as Brida was saying, with all the interventions on top of that, there is the maximum opportunity to break the cycle of disadvantage and uh, with larger numbers it's just not that effective and all research points to that, that um, the, the most effective number is 15, it's a magic number for some reason. Uh, 22 will mean restructuring groups, it will mean that children will be less visible, uh, that um, interventions, whatever, all the group sizes will have to be upped by so many children, so it's just not going to be the same kind of um, effective teaching, though obviously people are very well trained and will deal with the situation if it happened, but it won't happen because it is um, unconscionable that they would target the children in most educational, social, emotional need in the country before they even look at other ways of generating money for, um, for debts for paying back debts, but to come here and for the amount of money we're talking about, the savings that they would generate from uh, making these cutbacks in an area like this, it would be so minimal in the big picture that they really need, Rory Quinn needs to rethink this initiative because um, it's, it's not, for the, the damage it will cause, it's not a uh, a viable proposition. We have there are so many other areas, and it's a very um, it, you know the the idea of disadvantage. It's a disadvantage socially, but there's also um, a poverty of expectation and hope, and we cannot do anything to to further damage. The main thing that the parents can do is what they're doing already, which is coming up and expressing their outrage and their support in all the different things we're trying to do now to stop these cuts. And for me, the greatest thing that they could do is stand for their children, to stand strongly and say these children deserve to have a quality education that they've been receiving. They deserve to have the great improvements they've made. They deserve to have those sustained. So anything that would help that, whether it be uh, contacting your local TD, or, but already our parents have shown tremendous support. They've sent uh, petitions to the local politicians. They've come to all the different meetings. They've agreed to go out in the media and they've uh, been extremely supportive. But I think the strongest thing is, it's not, it, really, we all need to know it's about the children. So what every parent wants is the best of their child. So I would just encourage parents to keep standing for the children and to realise that this is not a luxury, this is a right. This is their right, and not to allow it to be taken away.